I want to be completely honest. I just found myself watching another of one of those Ron Paul endorsement ads. I have no idea why I'm watching them or why they're catching my attention every time they come up. But I slowly think it's because um, at the very beginning of them, it talks specifically about history and why we are in the wars we're in, what, why the problems we have are the problems we have, and that uh, that is um, it makes sense and is relate and it relates to philosophies that I have and whatnot. Let me get in rank 40 P90. Um, but uh, I want to welcome everyone to another uh, a helicopter tactical possible video gameplay. This will be the third one, hopefully. But um, I wanted to say that I'm a very historical person. I think that there's no reason why we should be making the same mistakes we have years down the road or make them in the future because if you have significant proof of something then why would you make the mistake again? Why would that mistake even why would that situation even come up again if it's already happened? But right now we are attacking the first base at Wake Island and as you can see we're being locked and um, I believe that's the end of the air vehicle right there but we end up getting clipped by a by a rocket, but of course we have an emergency uh, landing situation. Oh God! I, this is retarded. I don't know why this uh this barrier right here. I mean, you can go back this far into the spawn, and yet you have the barrier right there. But we do end up healing ourselves by going out of the way, and that's what you gotta do. You have to be aware. Um, if you know you're going to get hit, you should probably just instantly start heading over somewhere to where you're not going to be uh, be uh, largely affected or killed. Uh, you want to you want to be able to get out of the battle zone without having two stingers being shot at you. That's one of the worst things is when you have two stingers sh uh, being shot at you, and you only end up getting uh, maybe one one of the stingers uh, off with your flares, uh, like right here. And you can also see that you can easily maneuver out of the stingers range if you just keep going straight up and down, maybe fly behind a tree. Uh, the thing will have to reset, and it'll take you a while to uh, to set up what's up. I hit markers on that guy. There's that. Th uh, what, what are you shooting at there? I, I'm, I'm just, I can't really make out right now if the aircraft guns right there, but a whole bunch of uh, assist points or whatever right there. But look at all those dots. Now that's one of the good things about uh, having a pilot. I did talk. I've talked about this before, but it's really easy. If the pilot can can uh, fire his rockets, fly the plane, and spot people all at the same time, then in my opinion, you have a great pilot. Because my uh, my pilot, my friend, he can do all that himself, and it makes my job easier and me way more effective uh i really just kind of sit there uh call out things if i see it i i'd say that um it's my job to say whether or not the portable uh whether or not the uh the anti-air is up that's my job we'll say my job is to call anti-air and uh stinger positions out and stuff like that but here we have an emergency landing for uh repair and that always usually uh uh, sometimes you find it hard to to get down there, but this it looks like this game we've been we've been under heavy attack from anti air. The anti air vehicle is obviously up because of we, us taking fire. Ooh, Firefox 10 update is available. Both things popped up in the corner of my screen. We'll have to get that going. But what the heck is shooting at us? Oh, uh, ooh, this is the game I got the guided missile. Because uh, like I said, the guided missile is probably a good good thing to have as your second as your second tier when it comes to taking out the anti air because I already showed showcased it in my last video where I said you want to get one rocket off then one clip off with the uh with your um uh shoot what's it called with your primary mini gun and then you switch and it'll all work it usually works out nicely but now you are able still you have 10 seconds to to be able to do your business when you're outside the combat zone so it's really no big deal landing outside the combat zone and doing what you gotta do but um, some people probably find it hard, or you know, not really as capable to do it. Now, not, as you, if you can tell, none of this is caught. This is all one life, and it's going being consistent. And this also looks like that the game where uh, we're, we're saying to ourselves, "What is our team doing? We are up here. We have the enemies successfully pinned in the back of their own spawn. They're all trying to shoot us down because we are delivering a hectic blow, but yet we can't arm and destroy two little charges. You know." That's one reason why I wish Battlefield would allow you to have a full 12-man team, if at all possible. Uh, 
you know, or have some sort of game chat type based thing where people can go, uh, or, or, you know, something like that, because you need to be able to communicate. Me having a helicopter up here and us being able to deliver enough blow and power that we're every second of the game we're, tr we're getting locks on and people are trying to blow us up. That means we're doing something right as uh, being in a helicopter, all right? And that there's no reason why we shouldn't be taking these bases and just moving up uh, really fast. You know, we're also spotting people, which gives away their positions, which makes, you know, their job even easier down there on the ground because they know where the enemy's at. You know, I don't know how much easier we can give it for them. You know, how much more we could spoon feed our teammates. I mean, we're up here suppressing them, and there's really no one to our right uh, on the bridgeway covering the way to the next bombs, you know? You've got two or three guys over here by these rocks trying to shoot us out. I talked about this, that little out of spawn thing. That's, I don't know why that's there, but they really need to, um, by chance, fix that. I don't know if we stick this. Uh, okay, maybe we do. But the clip will stick is getting to its end here, so we'll probably get up and then. But uh, it's a, this is a very good example of what happens when uh, you're being effective and the enemy team doesn't really uh, find that to be really good, you know? When you're being effective, they want you out of there. And Corey, you suck at driving. You just rammed into two poles and blew us up. So you should probably work on your reverse tactics when you're flying a plane. But right now, we do end up having the guided missiles. And right here is exactly why they come in handy. Get the lock, you shoot them, and then you switch to the other gun, and you instantly start uh, suppressing. What's it? We got two or three guys on the rocks there. Uh, a guy in the anti aircraft gun, possibly. Uh, that's given us some problems right now but it, it, it's all manageable there's no reason why you should get shot down right away in a helicopter just partly because of the fact you can repair it you can do whatever and um, I guess we have some fail passes here and that's why this is all sped up but of course you do have those other passes where um, you don't do anything but you usually just land suppression but by firing the, your guns where people are you suppress them, you know, you do the suppression effect on them, and it does warrant, you know, some damage to them. It wears them down, you know. I swear, there's nothing worse than uh, being on that, being on defense on Wake Island and just c continually getting killed by a helicopter. It is so aggravating. Uh, but, you know, but th that's the thing, though. It's very easy if you're in that aircraft going to take out this, this helicopter. It is very, very easy to take it out. You just have to have a good person in the inner aircraft gun. You, can, you, know, you can't have an inexperienced person, you know. But then again, you can't have someone who, in, on the other team that is a very, very good pilot, too. Um, now, the, the pilot himself probably couldn't take out the inner aircraft vehicle that easily. But if you have a gunner, I'm sorry to say, but it's going to be a lot harder for the inner aircraft vehicle to counter the attack helicopter. But uh, that's also why I always have said that you need to make sure that you're communi the pilot and the co-pilot are communicating and you're most likely friends and you know what one, one or the other is capable of and you have a setup, you have a system that you can abide by so, so where you can get the max success out of your helicopter and out of your strategy. You know, you should be able to get, you should aim for at least one or two kills every single pass you make. So you've got one or two less people for that, for your team on the ground to worry about. Uh as you're looping around, you know, because that spawn it, thing is looping, you know what I mean? And, uh, I don't get why they have tanks here, but I'm pretty sure the tanks can't really do anything. Uh, I did mention before that they somehow, if they lob a tank shot, they will end up, like, hitting you or killing you. I don't know how that works, but... Ooh, they got us! But I got someone, too. Oh, Stinger guys, see that right there is when this is like, we're, we're worrying about an aircraft gun, uh, and then the the guy, the stinger comes out of nowhere and just destroys us. You know, that's also something that can be a weakness. Uh, that's one. That's an effective way for defense. If you're on the ground, what you want to do is you. If you really want to be semi-effective, target your helicopter when your anti-aircraft gun is up, and the helicopter is most likely worried about that because they're not going to be thinking about deploying flares while they're being shot at by an anti-aircraft gun. You know, that's where teamwork on defense comes into play and uh, strategy for defense, you know, it's not all offensive strategy, there's a lot of strategy to defense in Battlefield, and uh, I feel like I've, I've always, I haven't played Battlefield in a while, I've talked about that, uh, I don't, it's, I haven't been feeling it a lot lately, you know, it just hasn't been as fun and enjoyable as it has in the past, you know, and I said that I'm one of those pl people that if I'm not, if I don't want to play something, I'm really not going to play it, but if in all case we come down to the fact, well, I don't have any Battlefield gameplays, we're going to have to play it and noob it up to get some, but, you know, <laughs> Um, oh, another thing. I need a new 
campaign series to go up and um, I would love for the comment section to hit up with games that I could have. I'm sure you're aware of the games I have. All the games I have are listed on my channel in the description that I could do walkthroughs for. Um, it's probably going to end up being some sort of Call of Duty uh, thing. Probably, maybe, maybe World of War. I'm not sure yet. But that's probably what it's going to be. And uh, we did end up dying there. Kind of like a stall type deal, but that did end up round up the game and it was the stinger of course more than one thing did be happening once that happened so hope you guys enjoyed the video this is tactics video number three next video for helicopters will in fact be a dual com with the pilot so i hope you guys look out for that i hope you're ready for that remember to comment below about any sort of um uh campaign walk that you'd like to see probably going to be call of duty uh but if you have something else based on the games i have i'll probably jump on it so Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope everyone has a great day and weekend. Thanks for watching, guys.